Welcome to the Lorefolk Pages. Today, we will be discussing the Puka. This is a Celtic fairy, uh, and it is a fairy <laughs> this time around. Uh, and it is a... Conflicting reports say that it's good or bad, but uh, it is mostly mischievous, if there is one word to describe it. Uh, it is a shapeshifter that's natural form is thought to be goblin-esque, or is a goblin, because that's the word puka. It's an old Irish word meaning goblin, so we're going to go ahead and say that it is a goblin. A uh, shape-shifting goblin that likes to take the form of a horse, mainly, but will also take the form of a goat. It can take the form of a fox. It can take human form. It usually has animal traits when it does this. Uh, as a horse which is its favorite, I believe, from what I can gather. There's many tales uh, as uh, when it becomes a horse. It is either going to be, it's usually going to be, it's always going to be dark furred with either sickly yellow eyes or uh, glowing golden yellow eyes. And what it likes to do, uh, at least on the good side of things, is it'll entice drunk uh, passerbys. So you're coming back from a pub, you had a great night, really enjoyed yourself, when you walk out the doors, if a horse with yellow eyes starts talking to you, you are not that drunk, uh, even though you may think you are because you've been drinking since, you know, 12 in the afternoon and it's 5 a.m. I get it. You could start seeing horses talking to you. I'm sure hallucinations are a part of that. Uh, but it's not the case. More than likely, that's a puka. And if you are enticed by the puka, it's going to take you on one hell of a terrifying ride, usually through crops and fields. So, my story for this is when I was in high school, uh, we had a golf cart that we had at a lake house, and uh, we never used it, so we brought it down to be sold. And as it was, it sat in like our our shed or our back fence area for like uh, not months. But one time, my friends were over drinking uh, while my parents were asleep. And I thought it would be a great idea for six people to get on the golf cart and uh, drive around the backyard. Turns out that that's a lot of weight on a cart that can only hold three or four people. Puts ruts in the yard. So imagine my dad, you know, wanting to beat the ever-living you know, piss out of me, which he did. And I deserved. And uh, I learned weight dispersion and what not to do in someone's very well kept up yard especially when they're your father and they they will beat you no <laughs> he disciplined me but still not fun uh so this is that except it's your neighbor and your only defense was uh I, a puka told me to do it or got me to do it you can imagine that that's not going to go over very well Although I would think in mo even in modern times, there's still got to be people who have old stories of uh, these creatures and pukas. So, you know, don't be like me. Don't don't get on that golf cart of a puka and make ruts in the backyard of people's crops. Okay? Life lesson from me to you. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, okay, so anyway, like I said... Natural form is of a goblin, really likes to take the form of a horse and uh, entice people to take a ride. Uh, something else they love to do is to talk. They are they, they can mimic human speech perfectly, and they love to have a conversation. Uh, generally found that they apparently give good advice, good prophecies. Uh, I think the only talk of anything evil is when they're angered, and there wasn't even really any stories about them saying or doing evil, uh, like anything evil with the, the, the conversation portion. Usually that's just them wanting to talk to other humans, uh, or to humans in general. But I did find that on the other end uh, of the good, there is bad where it says they are murderous and dangerous. Uh, I found that in one of my other sources that says that they will, if you get on the back of one, instead of taking you through crops, they'll take you into a river or off a mountain cliff. So they'll either drown you or just drop you right off a cliff face. So I don't know. You know, I'm going I'm to say that maybe just avoid the black horse with sickly or golden yellow eyes that tries to talk to you. No matter what uh, level of inebriation, whether that's zero or a hundred. Okay? Do your best. 
do your best. Go ahead, stumble home, trip all the way there. Don't take the easy way out. It may be a puka, and that puka may be coming after you, okay? All right. Pukas seem to be a big part of Irish history and folklore. So I think they've, I've read where they've said that they're their most dangerous fairy. Uh, again, I've read conflicting reports that they are uh, very good natured spirits uh, for the most part, and only when they're angered do they become bad. Uh, but I guess for the last bit of what I found will just be tidbits of random information uh, that kind of link back to the puka. Uh, I thought it was really cool that many small lakes and ponds uh, were named after uh, pukas. They were called uh, puka pools. And uh, some are found at the source of major Irish rivers, uh, such as the Liffey in Dublin City or River Bond, uh, which is the largest river in Northern Ireland uh, that runs through uh, Coleraine. I, I may have mispronounced that horribly, and I'm sorry for everyone that lives there. Uh, and it was kind of cool that once there, once the Christianization of Ireland happened, a lot of those puka pools were renamed to St. Patrick's Wells, which uh, I guess makes sense. Because in the modern day, we are celebrating St. Patrick's Day and not Puka Day. Although I'm, I'm sure there's still celebrations of pukas. Uh, I, I thought that was cool. Uh, if you want to defend against a puka, I found defense, uh, at least at least for the drunken horse ride, uh, is to or any uh, any time the the puka tries to get you on its back as a horse, is to wear sharp spurs. That way you can steer in the direction you want. Uh, there was a story of a kid who had uh, talked to his old man, who had given him spurs to ward off a puka after the kid had met it. And when the kid did have the spurs, the puka came back again after the first time when the kid got away because he had the spurs. And the puka said, you know, you want to go on a, you know, or the kid actually, when he met the puka, he started off the conversation, which is rare, but uh, he was able to, he was able to gain that foothold from the spurs that he had had on. And uh, he said, hey, you want to go on another ride? The puka said, you got the sharp spur, the sharp things. And the kid was like, yeah, and the puka was like, ooh, nope, mm-mm, see ya, and he bounced, he was gone, he said, peace, and that was, that was that, so that's a good defense, wear, uh, cowboy boots and spurs, doesn't matter what horse you're on, you're gonna have your own ride, it will not take you on its ride. Now, the opening line a puka's gonna use in conversation, to tell you, kind of give you an idea, let you know that it's a puka, uh, it's very fond of, you are new here, I think, if you hear that, uh, just if you don't want to talk to the if you know you don't want to talk to a puka, just ignore it. Walk on. Um, if you do end up in a conversation and realize that's what they said at the beginning, or just you remember it, whatever you're in the midst of it, just make sure you don't say goodbye. Um, or you can. There's not really an adverse effect. You just will feel like the past hour or the past conversation never happened. Uh, they are able to just kind of disappear from your memory uh, from having that conversation. Uh, they're is a tale of old Irish uh, folk that say they'll tell you that pukas are bad. They're dark furred, they're wicked minded, and bad things uh, is what they say. So, again, very conflicting reports on when they talk to you. I've heard that they can give good prophecies, uh, good fortune. They kind of uh, are, they just sound like, I don't know, like a n- nice friend of the family. Uh, but then. There, there's these tales of them doing, you know, taking on horseback people into the rivers and drowning them or off cliff sides, and then old Irish folk saying that they are not just mischievous but dangerous and bad. So take it for what you will, just be careful. Because the puka, you know, if it is bad, that could spur trouble. Aha, you see, oh, you, oh, you see what I did there? Oh, that was terrible. Okay. Uh, w- another thing I found that showed up a lot were berries. Not sure, we're not sure why, but, uh, I- anyway, overripe berries are said to contain puka in them, or puka spirits, maybe? I don't know. I didn't really understand it. The way it was written, it sounded like the puka was in the berry. Like it shapeshifted into the berry? That would be interesting. Uh, anyway, just don't eat it. It's got a puka in it. Or if it's got frost on it from a like a winter time, if there's frost on it, that is said to be puka spit, and it makes it poisonous. So don't eat it. Gross. 
Uh, last, I guess, thing that I kind of came across was it's associated with the harvest, the Godelic, Godelic, I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, Harvest Festival Samhain. I did not research anything on Samhain, so that's on me for not being prepared <laughs> for this particular thing. Uh, but apparently, or I imagine, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I've heard the name before and it sounds like, I feel like I, for some reason it's associated with Halloween, but I, cause I'm thinking of a, I don't know. Anyway, I'm, I may be messed up. If anybody knows more about Sam Hain or wants to do the research, please comment or email. Let me know. I'd love to learn a little more. Uh, or I could do the research on my, you know, after all the, anyway, it doesn't matter. I'd rather, I want you to be involved. So comment, tell me about Sam Hain. Anyway, it's associated with the Harvest Festival, uh, Samhain. It, it doesn't say specifically specifically how, but I'm assuming it, it, anything to do with uh, bringing good fortune to it or mischief to it. But hey, that's about all I got for the puka. You know, not not near as much as the brownie, but again, I kind of rambled on that last one. I promise they're gonna keep getting better. I'll get more succinct at all this, but uh, I, I'm enjoying it, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for tuning in to the Lorefold Pages.